uh, been a while since I've been here on this stage in this capacity as the Unirhymer or whatever else I was, Poetry on Demand. I was given a task previously, one which I took a long time to get done. Unfortunately, the task I was given was to do a poem on the Hawaiian goes to the zoo. And I thought it was going to be a whimsical piece. I thought it was going to be a piece that people would laugh at. Unfortunately, it became a dark piece. And so, to cleanse my soul, I sat down and I let it out and I wrote it down. And I looked for a publisher and I couldn't find one. <laughs> so, I decided to do what any responsible author would do in this day and age. I decided to self-publish. My book is called Strange Tales of the Open Stage. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Strange Tales of the Open Stage, part one. The Hawaiian goes to the zoo. And this is kind of like uh, the Necronomicon. I have to open it. I've got, oh, I use recycled materials. Yes, I'm very green friendly. This is the story about one known as the Hawaiian. It is said to have happened somewhere in 2014, might have been earlier, or later, or never. Anyway, no matter. One night, the Hawaiian slept and dreamt. It seemed his mind had bent to thoughts of seek and find, grist for its mill of creation via a short vacation. And so it pondered, and as it did, it wandered many ways seeking any places that would be good to mine for traces of inspiration. Since the Hawaiian is an author of many venues, the menu must include food for thought of his drawing and writing, performing, inciting all his inventive glands to produce juice his muse would use to expand. Of late, his mind seemed to focus on the stage, the locus of his stories, and he felt them quite boring without context and subtext of a world around that would abound with plants and animal subjects. Right then he knew, the zoo. He would go and peruse the flow for creatures he could use and slate to populate the worlds with which his mind he did create. And there he was, this Hawaiian guy, in his mind's eye, walking down the path, sketchbook in hand, and planned to bring beasts to live in his land. He came upon a field, and a zebra did it yield. He spoke to it, saying, You seem a likely candidate for me to use, but first my muse dictates that your stripes, your patterning of black and white, must go. Your coat will have to show a darker shade, an indigo. You will no longer neigh, but sing. Your song will drift and spin and wing. Ah, that's just the thing. And as he drew inside his book, the zebra's shape, it changed, it took a hue of blue. Wings then grew, and with eyes wide did it transform and leap into the sky, singing thanks and then a quick goodbye. With a smile, then satisfied, the Hawaiian continued with eager stride. His trip had put him round the bend where he would find his next furred friend to nip and tuck and change again with his pad and pen. But the zoo had become quiet. If any creature was there to stir, the Hawaiian could not spy it. As frustration began to leak, he seemed forever doomed to seek. At last, he topped desire's peak. There it was, his answer. A cat, but no small one. It filled the path, a panther. The gold eyes stared him down with no surprise, and the cat said, Oh, do not surmise that you will draw away my nature or my form this day. I love to play, but what you do is remake, and trying that with me might 
be your last mistake. The Hawaiian was not at all amused. This dream, it seemed, was his to use, to grow and stretch the muscles of his muse. He would not be deterred by simple words, no matter how surely they were purred. So he took his pen and grip and prepared right then to pull and clip the teeth and claws of this presumptuous cat. He'd redraw the maw and paw, and that would be that. He fixed the spot with a baleful glare, but lo, where did the errant kitten go? A growl of laughter from behind made the Hawaiian turn and find a toothy grin close enough for him to touch, but much more importantly, close enough to touch him. He stepped back away from the range of an attack, but damn, the beast was gone again. And then the Hawaiian was chagrined to feel the silk of fur upon his skin. Have no fear, said the cat. Just stay that hand, unless you choose, of course, to use it to increase the efficacy of the things I gain quite naturally on changes like that. I think we can agree. So the Hawaiian drew and panther's claws and teeth they grew. But one thing the master could not grow was panther's stealth. Because you know, for him to have command and rearrange it, he first must understand it to change it. This dream's charm was wearing thin, so before he came to harm, the Hawaiian, who gained some things to place in his tails, decided this trip was growing stale. He chose to deem it through because he knew the moral of the story. The danger in dreams lies not in where you control them, but in where they control you. So the Hawaiian turned away, deciding to no longer stray inside this zoo. So he followed the advice his common sense bespoke. He awoke. And that, my friends, is the story of the Hawaiian going to the zoo. Poetry and Tales on Demand by Chris Cortinez. Featuring our very good friend, and slightly more awake, thank you, Scott Rankins.